What's up, listeners? Welcome, Welcome back, back to Cool at the Podcast. Cool at the Podcast. This is episode two, where we're bringing you a peek inside the world of chemical engineering. We are your hosts, Claire, Pam, Carrie, and Denise. Today's episode will definitely bring our listeners to one of the most relevant issues the world is facing. Do you agree, guys? You're right, Gary. A very significant one. All of us can't escape from it. Everybody has to breathe. And when air is not clean, our health is affected. People, animals, and plants are all affected by air pollution. And that is why we bring you today's podcast and talk about air pollution and how to control it. So, what really is air pollution? What are the causes and why is it relevant? To put it simply, air pollution is the contamination of air by harmful gases, dust and smoke, solid particles and liquid droplets, which are called air pollutants. There are numerous cases of air pollution, but the most common and dominant are burning of fossil fuels, factories and industries, agricultural activities, automobiles, mining activities, and domestic sources. In fact, air pollution is not considered to be the world's largest environmental health threat, considering that it has contributed to diseases, global warming, ozone layer depletion, and acid rain. Imagine how significant its impact. Indeed, this growing concern should not be underestimated, and each one of us should take actions to reduce air pollution. Exactly, Claire. That is why numerous studies and control strategies, such as air emission control technologies, have been developed to mitigate and prevent air pollution at its source. In connection with today's podcast, we are discussing a specific manufacturing plant's air treatment process and how those air emission control technologies are utilized to control, mitigate, and prevent air pollution that the facility can possibly contribute. This certain plant, is it the same one we discussed last episode? Yes, it is. They produce spiral wound filter modules using cellulose acetate as the solute and acetone and dimethyl formamide as the solvent. This certain plant uses solution blow spinning technology or SBS to produce nanofiber membranes that will filter household tap water to make it potable. This is honestly such a helpful invention. Imagine, you don't need to buy safe and potable water from refilling stations. You could save some serious money. But why did we choose this company again? Because the certain company uses acetone and dimethylformamide as solvents. And these chemicals are known to be volatile, hazardous, and harmful to human health if exposed to high concentrations for long periods of time. And we want to know and educate our listeners how they treat these fumes to keep their workers and the surrounding environment safe. It is also interesting to note that the compressed air that pushes the polymer solution to produce the nanofibers are filtered first to make sure that there are no impurities present from the ambient air that can affect the quality of the nanofiber membranes produced. I wonder, during the mixing process, are there any fumes generated? I'm sure there are, but the mixing happens in an enclosed mixer. This is to prevent the said fumes from escaping, and I'm pretty sure that the company provides their workers complete protective equipment. Yes, that is true. Safety standard is a must. That is also why we need to treat the toxic fumes generated in the SBS process. As we all know, both solvents that are used in the process are toxic, right? And they are harmful to the environment and humans when released in air as well. What are the other benefits in having a recovery system for them? Depending on the amount of the solvent, the plant could actually save money through the proposed recovery system, especially if the solvents present are expensive. So that's a win-win situation, right? For us humans and the environment as well as the plant itself. Yes, that is correct. So, where does the collected DMF and acetone vapors go? In order to prevent environmental damage, the solvent vapors collected after the SBS or the spraying process will be recycled using a condenser. Recycled? But how do we use the vapors when the processes require liquid solvents? Yes, you heard it right. 
In order to recycle the solvent vapors, it will be converted to its liquid form using the condenser. So now, maybe you're curious as to what a condenser is, right? Well, let me explain it to you. A condenser is a device that involves heat transfer in its process. With heat transfer, the device is able to condense a gaseous substance into liquid state through cooling. Air conditioners at our home make use of this process to cool our rooms. Heat transfer, you say? Then that means two fluids are involved in the process. That is correct, Tam. Two fluids are involved in order to perform heat transfer. A hot and cold fluid is required. For the case of our process, the hot fluid is our solvent vapor, while the cold fluid is our cooling water. Can you explain the process further? Sure, Carrie. So basically, the solvent vapor enters the condenser at a temperature above that of the cooling water. As the vapor cools, it reaches its saturation temperature and condenses to liquid. What does saturation temperature mean? Okay, so when the two fluids come into contact with each other, the entering cooling water will become hotter along the process, while the solvent gas will become cooler. As the heat is removed from the vapor, it reaches its saturation temperature. And when this happens, a simple phase change will occur. The gas will turn into liquid. Therefore, as this process occurs along the condenser, the quantity of the vapor decreases while that of the liquid increases and at the outlet of the condenser only the liquid remains and that my dear is our solvents i get it so now that the recovered solvents are in its liquid form it can now be recycled and used in the process once again wow so that's it as you all heard air pollution has become one of the world's most concerning issues it contaminates our environment and disturbs the balance of our ecosystem Moreover, it has a great impact on our lifestyle. As the world is getting more modern, air pollution is also enhancing day by day. Further, it has become rather essential to learn about the causes, types, impacts, and ways to control them. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed our podcast. We'll see you on the next episode of...